welcome to today's episode of Optimize. Now, normally these episodes are going to be very to the point and I'll dive right into it, but today I had a mild rant, I guess, that I wanted to talk about and I thought about it and I did decide that I think it's worthwhile to mention. So, today's episode is going to be about using your RME interface with uh, basic chat programs, Google Hangouts, Facebook, Skype, etc. And if you're finding this video, it's probably because you, much like I did, found it pretty difficult to do something so basic as that. Now, I love RME's hardware. I love their software. It's super flexible. I love the built-in DSP. Total Mix, generally speaking, is great. You can do so many things with it. And I'm a big advocate and fan of using their hardware. I haven't had any, hardly any trouble with it. But in the rare instances where you do actually need some help with something and you go to their forums, their customer support can be really like brusque and dismissive and be like, well, read the manual, it's in there. So then you go to the manual and it almost feels like they just didn't want to hire a technical writer and they had the engineers do it. So it's very precise uh, from an engineering standpoint, but not very helpful from an operator standpoint of like, how do I get this to do X and Y? Another example, aside from loopback functionality, is MIDI. Yes, it's written into the manual and then, man, they will tell you to go and do that, but like, you know, make MIDI learn or make it assignable and, and give me a little bit more of an example because I've had a really challenging time actually getting it to work as it's stated in the manual. So, for RME, uh, I hope you'll get your customer service kind of like in line, especially since your hardware is so, you know, expensive and it's worth it, but, you know, consider that your customers are paying a lot of money and if they need help, most likely you should help them and not, you know, be unhelpful like that. So that's my mild rant. I think customer service is really important. And also, I do tutorials and I like teaching lessons, and it's really important to me that when you're informing somebody how to do it, that you're not being judgmental of what they may not know and things like that. Everybody's coming from a different place. So I think that's really important. So I do still recommend RME if you're on the fence about purchasing it, but just be aware that their customer service can be a little bit kind of smug and dismissive and I found it to be irritating as I was doing research for uh, prepping this video. But that said, generally speaking, hardware and software works great. Let's dive into how to do this. I'm using the Fireface 802 for this demo, but all of the same principles will apply regardless of interface. Since most people will be using outputs 1 and 2 as their main speakers, I'm going to show you how to use loopback based on those outputs. First, let's make sure that everything is set up correctly in Skype and OSX. Make sure that your interface is selected as both the input and output device for your system. You can do this in either System Preferences or in Audio MIDI Setup, which is located in Finder, Applications, Utilities. In Skype, go to Preferences, Audio, Video, and make sure that your interface is selected as both the speakers and the microphone. In Total Mix FX, let's set up our video chat routing and save it as a snapshot. It is important to note that you must use a separate headphone output for monitoring and mute your main outputs when using this method to avoid feedback and audible echoes over the connection. To set up what you will hear during the call, select whichever headphone output you will be using. Keep in mind, I am using the submix routing mode in Total Mix, which means that all channels correspond with the hardware output that I have selected. For those of you using the free routing mode, Make sure that you double check you have the correct output pair selected on each channel strip. On your headphone submix, bring up the microphone input to monitor your own voice, and then bring up playback 1 and 2, which is the software outputs that let you hear the person you're speaking with. Remember, this is not affecting what they will hear. This is only your monitoring level for each element. These can be at whatever volume you're comfortable with, and it is completely independent of the outgoing signal. Now select Hardware Output 1 and 2. This is the hardware output that the person you are chatting with will hear. Make sure that the hardware output is muted to avoid any feedback or volume spikes. Also make sure that Playback 1 and 2 are completely off. If left on, your guest will hear a duplicate echo of their voice coming back through the line. Turn up the fader of your microphone and make sure that the proper signal level is getting through. Finally, Click the Wrench Disclosure button on the Hardware Output 1 and 2 and select Loopback. At this point, I highly recommend storing this setup as a snapshot. 
Click Store once and then select the snapshot slot that you want to save it in and give it a label. Make sure to also save the workspace after storing the snapshot. Over in Skype, let's start a test call. Hello, welcome to Skype Core Testing Service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. And make sure that you can hear yourself. And make sure that you can hear yourself. For those of you doing podcasts and interviews, you can also blend any other audio element routed to either the analog and digital inputs or using other audio applications that can output to the other software playback channels. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out my Patreon page where I offer private lessons and project files from these tutorial videos. See you next time.